This is lesson three for module three, hydraulics. We'll talk about hydraulic systems, specifically pumps, cylinders, motors, and valves of different types. Basic hydraulic systems, a system with a controller that is automated by a PLC, and an introduction to schematics. In this example, a force equal to 20 pounds of weight is pressed on cylinder A's piston. The piston compresses the fluid as it moves downward. The fluid is shown in tan. This will push fluid against the bottom of cylinder B's piston. If the fluid is not compressible, that is, it cannot be smashed into a, a more dense liquid, the volume of fluid leaving cylinder A will be equal to the volume of fluid that is entering cylinder B, thus pushing the larger piston up a shorter distance, but with a much greater force. That force of 20 pounds on piston A is being spread out over the surface area of piston A, which is 3.14 square inches. If you recall from the area formula for a circle, area equals pi r squared. Piston B has a diameter of 4.5 inches. This makes the force acting on piston B a direct proportion. 3.14 square inches is to 20 pounds, as 15.9 square inches is to x number of pounds. Solving this, x is equal to 101, approximately. This means that piston B will push up with 101 pounds of force when piston A has 20 pounds pressing down on it. 20 pounds pressing down, 101 pounds of force upward on piston B. Piston B has a much greater force, but will travel a shorter distance since it has a wider bore. If you've ever used a hydraulic jack, you see this happen. The handle you use to lift a vehicle or other piece of machinery moves very far, but the position of the piston moves up slowly. This force problem could also be solved by finding the PSI of cylinder A. In other words, pounds per square inch equals the force in pounds dispersed over an area, so divided by A. That is 20 pounds per 3.14 inches square which equals 6.37 pounds per square inch. Take that pressure dispersed over an area of 15 square inches, so the force of B would be 6.37 psi times 15.9 square inches, and you still get 101 pounds. Hydraulic pumps. There are different pumps that are used to create the pressure rather than just using a piston being pressed down as in a jack or something like that. There are gear pumps that basically take the incoming low pressure fluid and these gear teeth compress the fluid as it comes in. These, this one rotates counterclockwise, this one clockwise. That compresses the fluid and builds pressure and flow on the other side. The other type is a lobe pump where there is a cylindrical piece that is eccentric to the position of the rotating shaft it's connected to. So as it rotates at this point of rotation, it swings around, collects the incoming fluid, and pressurizes it. It exits here. With a vein pump, it's sort of the same design as a lobe pump, veins or strips of metal plates that are in a grooved cylinder as it rotates. The plates over on the far end get pushed in and the plates over here extend out. This is done by spring pressure or some other method. So they're always up against the wall where this is a large volume and behind it on the, on the other side of it is a smaller area where it will be compressed. So it flows in, becomes compressed, and exits through here. A piston pump is very basic. One way is to just have a flapper valve or a check valve at the top of the piston. 
and as the crankshaft rotates it pulls in hydraulic fluid so it fills this entire crank chamber as the piston moves back it allows fluid to fall into the chamber as the piston moves over to the right it compresses that fluid because the flapper shuts due to the volume of liquid in front of the piston and it is squeezed through a check valve so low pressure comes in here is pressurized on the front side of the piston and exits here. Here is a hydraulic cylinder, not a pump, but a hydraulic cylinder that's just used for changing the hydraulic pressure into a force in a linear direction. And it's also a double acting cylinder. That is to say it has force when it is extending and force when it is retracting. Hydraulic motors are similar to the vein pump. The simple types of hydraulic motors are similar in construction to a vein pump. High pressure comes in through the bottom, would rotate the veins would rotate the veins clockwise and it would turn about this center point where a shaft would come out of this casing. It would then exit through the top in this diagram. Different types of hydraulic valves. Here's a two position center off selector valve and its symbol. Here's the arm and the incoming pressure and it also has a spring return on the lever. There are also flow control valves and check or pressure relief valves. A check valve lets flow only go in one direction so it can't back feed. And relief valves act as pressure regulators and safety devices. Once the pressure is great enough underneath the stopper, the force acts against the spring's expansion force and will bypass the valve. As it pushes it up, the chamber becomes larger and it will go around it. That can be used for pressure regulation or for a safety blow off. A basic hydraulic system is illustrated here. This is a hydraulic jack or a hydraulic lift. This is not a practical system, but it's, it helps illustrate the basics. Here's the hydraulic fluid reservoir, where it is gravity fed into the vein pump. The vein pump is turned by a shaft at this point of rotation by an electric motor or other device. The check valve only allows the fluid to exit this way so it cannot bypass back into the pump so all pressure is maintained after the check valve. And it is regulated through this pressure control valve. Lower pressure fluid pours back into the reservoir. Here the ball valve is shown open. The open connection is what's shown here and fluid will flow through it, will be blocked from going to the low pressure return will be forced to go into the hydraulic cylinder, thus pushing the hydraulic cylinder up. Of course there could be other designs in here that limit the up force of the hydraulic cylinder and also prevent it from over extruding. When the ball valve is turned off here on the high pressure line, it turns on this low pressure return. So when the hydraulic cylinder is full, the ball valve is closed so high pressure can no longer get to it, so it's no longer pressurized, and it will fall back down due to gravity, assuming there's some weight on top of it. And the fluid will be forced through the other half of the valve that would be open in that, and up back into the reservoir. So this is a really basic system but it helps illustrate how hydraulic systems work. Getting into the hydraulic blade pitch control. Here's a basic control system for blade pitch 
This system involves the pitch controller, the servo controller, the flow control valve, the cylinder, which is acting as a linear actuator, the linkage from the cylinder to the blade, and the displacement transducer, as well as the pump that generates the hydraulic pressure. Hydraulic fluid is indicated by brown arrows. Position signals are indicated in orange, and command signals are indicated by red arrows. Simply put, the pump maintains constant pressure and an available volume of hydraulic fluid. The pitch controller uses the wind speed and other inputs to determine whether the current position of the blade is correct. If the blade is in the correct position for those wind conditions, the signal sent from the pitch controller tells it to maintain its current position. The servo controller maintains the cylinder and this blade position by monitoring the signal from the displacement transducer that just changes the signal over to something the servo controller can understand and the servo controller constantly adjusts the flow control valve to maintain the pressure and volume necessary to keep the cylinder piston suspended in its current position so the pitch controller has decided that the blade pitch is correct based on the position signal and also the wind speed so it tells the servo maintain position and the servo does this by maintaining the proper flow in the flow control valve so that it puts just the right pressure on the cylinder to hold the blade in its position and that position data is also sent through the displacement transducer back to the servo so the servo knows whether it needs to adjust the flow control valve The other circumstance is when the pitch controller has detected a change in wind and deems an adjustment of the blade pitch is necessary. When this occurs, the maintain position signal changes. This new signal tells the servo controller to adjust its control loop to the new position. It does this by increasing pressure to move the cylinder outward or by decreasing pressure to retract the cylinder to the desired position. It does this by controlling the flow control valve. With this system, there are essentially two distinct control loops, one to adjust and maintain cylinder position, and another to monitor the wind and whether the position is correct, in other words, at the critical angle. So the servo controller adjusts the flow control valve, which adjusts the cylinder position. The position is fed back to the servo controller, so it knows if it's at the right spot and is able to maintain it there. So this is the first control loop. The other is the blade position, the pitch controller, and it tells the servo whether to move from its current position or maintain its position. Now I'll show a video on a pneumatic system. It is air rather than fluid, so it's not really hydraulic, but it has a very similar operation. Here we see the cylinder moving outward as a double acting piston, releases the pressure and makes the cylinder retract. This is a basic extend retract circuit. Here's another pneumatic system that has automated control. You may have seen it before in the previous PowerPoint. Here we see the PLC and input. Now it's automated. 
These are pneumatic solenoid valves and the small signal from the PLC activates the electromagnet within it and that pulls a pintle out and that allows fluid or air rather to pass through it to the components and you see various types of cylinders and a motor and this would be similar in operation to a pneumatic system a little bit on schematics here's a basic extend retract cylinder system controlled by hand operated valves the schematic shows the motor, the lines, the pump, a sediment filter, the reservoir or storage tank, the selector valve, the double acting cylinder, and the vent for the control valve. So here is the tank, the filter, pump, and pump motor, and the line going into the selector valve, the vent for the selector valve, also output of the valve that would force the cylinder back in with pressure and the other line that would force the cylinder outward with pressure. Terms for this lesson are hydraulic force, hydraulic fluid, hydraulic cylinders, pumps, motors, and the various types of valves. This is the last lesson for module 3 and this ends unit 7. You'll need to complete the module 3 checkup. You should be done with the reading or close to it. Also the module 3 lesson 3 quiz and the module 3 test over lessons 1 through 3. That is all. Have a good one.